Greetings. Welcome back to the Spirit Walker channel. Uh, I hope you're well. So it's good to have you guys here. To th this, this week we are going to uh, have a video that is a little bit more, more like a uh, podcast. So I'm not going to have any um, any images, so the, or graphical props, or or footage, or, or anything like that. So you can actually listen to this video, listen to this audio uh, while you're making a tea or or doing something or driving, etc. So uh, this this week, I just wanted to discuss two theories of of uh, soul traps. So it's the idea that we could indeed be trapped here on a circle of incarnation and reincarnation and so on and so forth. And why what why would be why would this be the case? This is um, something that is of course very concerning. We could be trapped in more than one sense. There could be there are different theories, and I would like to discuss just two of these theories uh, today. The first theory is the Gnostic theory, or the Gnostic possibility, and, and we're going to discuss that based on what was what what is still known in regards to Gnosticism that has survived through. Uh, things like Hermeticism and also even through the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found in 1947. So that is the the, the, the basis for, for this theory. And we're also going to discuss the, 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 the second theory which is more aligned with how could I put it? Uh, conventional spiritual beliefs. Things relating to um, to theosophy and spiritism, and also even the law of one has uh, has some has some uh, common material with that. So, okay. So according to Gnosticism, the, so the the first theory, Gnosticism, why would we be trapped in samsara? Why would we be trapped in the circle of incarnation and reincarnation, according to Gnosticism? In order to answer that, we would have to understand where the whole story of humanity com comes from the point of view of the Gnostics. So I'll just give a very brief introduction, a very brief summary of how the Gnostics used to see humanity and used to see the condition of humanity as well. So the idea is that the, at the, the center of the galaxy there is a black hole and this is confirmed by science so it's not just a traditional Gnostic, Gnostic uh, belief but this is actually confirmed by science that at the center of our galaxy there is a, a black hole but what Gnostics believe is that this black hole emanates energy and it's the, the creation of it leads to the creation of the entire galaxy so not only physical energy in terms of photons and all sorts of atoms atoms uh, cre created by uh, thermonuclear fusion etc but also all of the other forms of energy such as mental energy astral energy etheric energy and all that. So the source of all that would be this central star, this central node for the whole galaxy. And out of this galaxy there came a being which was a feminine being. Out of the center of the galaxy there came a being, it was a feminine being, it was called Sophia. And Sophia was in charge of creating life in our sector of the galaxy. So, so and some people call it Sophia, but I, 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 I'm pretty sure that the, uh, well, anyway, so I, I, I prefer to call her Sof Sophia. And Sophia was, my, according to my understanding, Sophia was a 
an emanation of energy, an emanation of feminine energy that was sent, that was dispatched to our sector of the galaxy to create life and to create everything that we that we know, everything that we touch and see and feel and, and all that. So, but Sophia made a slight mistake, which was that she was supposed to create life on organic matter. And she didn't. She actually, she was so, apparently she was so eager to create life that she uh, dispatched her creative energy indiscriminately. And uh, she ended up creating organic life, but also uh, inorganic life. The inorganic life is what the Gnostics call the Archons. And the organic life is pretty much all of the other life forms that we know today, including us, including humanity. Now, the Archons are beings that they cannot sustain themselves, they cannot sustain their own life, and because of that they have to latch on to organic life forms like us and suck the energy that they need to sustain themselves. So they have all interest in keeping us uh, keeping us locked in to a cycle where we need to provide them with this energy. So it's pretty much just like a farm where the farmer puts fences around the, uh, the area to keep the cattle in and to keep the cattle you know, constantly uh, circumscribed to a certain area. So it's the same idea. So we would be cattle, and the archons would be the, the the ones calling the shots and sucking our energy. And according to Gnosticism as well, there is a grid. The archons have set up a grid around planet Earth. There is a grid that is... Uh, how could I put it? It's a grid that, that, that uh, prevents our souls from leaving the sphere once we die, once the, once the soul is free from the physical body. But even then, the soul would not be completely free. The soul would still be trapped in this grid, in this network that surrounds the entire planet Earth. According to some researchers, the Archons are the, the Reptilians and the Greys, so, they are, so there is some kind of uh, overlapping of the concept of interdimensional beings and non-terrestrial beings, although there is nothing preventing non-terrestrial beings from being uh, interdimensional. So if you saw, if you, if you had a Reptilian right in front of you, you may not be able to see him because they are in another dimension. They are made of a different type of vibration, although they can manifest themselves into our reality. So, in any case, this is the, the net, this is the, the grid that lock our souls in to the planet Earth. And some researchers would then go to... The, the next question would be, of course, if... If we do have this net, if we do have a system that is an actual soul trap, how do we get out of it? Well, the idea is when you when you die and you 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 wake up in a spiritual form on the other side, there is the, the that, that moment that a lot of near death experiencers have described, which is the moment of seeing a light and a light approaching you. And sometimes the light comes with beings that are familiar to you, like your dead grandfather or, or a, uh, a very dear friend that passed before you, etc. And according to these Gnostic researchers, 
that light would be a trap because if you say yes I want to go into that light they would consider that or the archons would consider that as an authorization to take you into that trap to take you back again into the circle or the cycle of, of uh, incarnation and reincarnation so because of this as, as the theory goes the higher beings in the universe would not be able to do anything because you used your free will to say that you want to stay in the same state that you have always been even though it was something that was acquired by deception but you did consent and if you gave your consent you are not in a position that you can be rescued or you can be you can be uh, brought back outside from the circle so these people they suggest several different ways to get out of this trap I would say in my, well, in my, in my view I would say well if this theory is right I would say that maybe the best way for you to go when you wake up consciously on the other side in, in a spiritual form is you mentalize and you repeat that you want to go back to source you don't want to be trapped in the physical cycle of incarnation and reincarnation you want to go back to source and any contract that is signed any contract that is agreed upon through deception will be null and void and you are aware of this and if you do this if you mentalize this while you are in that in that uh, transition you could very well be immune to this to this type of of uh, of trick or trickery so I don't know so different people would have different ways or different suggestions I'm not saying that this work because I of course if I'm, I'm here it, 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 it means that I'm still <laughs> I'm still trapped uh, just like uh, everybody else but I think that it's something that we 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 should discuss and we should uh, we should get uh, different views and I and this is why I think that it's so important that you guys send in your views you write your comments down below in the comment section and leave your views let's all share let's all uh, grow together with with this knowledge so that's that's the, the first theory which is the, the Gnostic theory of a soul trap of a natural soul trap I'm not saying that I endorse this theory I'm just saying that it's one of the things that we should consider the other theory is more of a uh, spiritual slant, a spiritual bend to it. And it's, it's the theory that is discussed in Spiritism, it's the, the theory that is discussed in Theosophy, it's the theory that is discussed in the Law of One as well, and several other traditions. And so this is... The, the theory goes like this. Yes, we are trapped. And yes, there are evil beings that are willing to do everything that they can to keep us locked into, the, into reincarnation. But the way that they do this is different from the first theory. First of all, there would be no soul trap. Absolutely no soul trap, no greed, no energetic greed around the earth. But what they would do is they would send evil beings, so evil interdimensional beings, you can call them demons if you like, to convince you and to suggest to you to do you know things that you would later re regret so it's similar to the you know when the, the cartoonish image of when you uh, when you have a doubt then a, a little red devil appears in your left shoulder so it will be similar to that so you could have a view that every time you would have some doubt about what course you should take the evil 
beings would then approach you and suggest you, you, that, that suggest to you that you take a course of action that is going to cause harm to someone. What would that do? That, what that would do is that it, it would generate karma for you, for you. And by generating karma, that karma, that um, miasma, that dense energy would trap you in the circle of reincarnation. You would have to come back to to expunge that karma, to uh, to release that karma, to release that bad energy. It's like when you were when you were playing in the mud, and your mom calls you to go back to uh, go back to your home and uh, and uh, to have dinner, and you're very hungry. You can't just go and sit at the table. You have to go back and clean yourself. And then you'll be able to get into the house and and uh, and have dinner. So it's the same idea. You would have to expunge your karma. And if the negative being suggested that you do something evil and you accept the suggestion and you act accordingly, that is your karma. That is your free will. You're, you're using your free will to do something that is evil. It's your responsibility. So this would be the trap. That is the trap. That's how they would lock you in the circle of samsara. So that's the second theory. Uh, I tend to be more inclined to agree with this second theory. I don't know about you guys. I would really appreciate your comments, your views, your extensions. If you could, if you have any additional information. Uh, about these two theories and about if you, and if you have any views just let us know let's have a discussion in the in the comment section below so thank you very much have a blessed week and um, remember that uh, beyond sorrow there is happiness and beyond happiness beyond both there is peace see you later bye